Today is question 5 of 12. Why did the Reds win the Civil War? Now, this is a perfectly answerable question, some brilliant evidence. The problem is the evidence doesn't really overlap with any other questions. So in that sense, you're going to need to provide a bit more time to memorise information within this question. So, background first. By 1921, it was clear the Reds had won the Civil War. There was going to be skirmishes for the next couple of years, but by 1921, everyone knew what the outcome was going to be. Throughout the Civil War, Trotsky had been the Commissar of War, so that meant he was almost like the Commander-in-Chief of the War, the Commissar of War, whilst Lenin led domestically what was going on in Russia. Um, both of these two men were central to the Reds' victory, alongside the Whites' weaknesses. So, why did the Reds win the Civil War? Firstly, Red strengths, and why, I couldn't find the right icon there, White weaknesses. So, let's look at White weaknesses first. But remember, when we look at these, for all we talk about white weaknesses, we can often reverse them and think of them as red strengths. So, white weaknesses. Firstly, the whites had a geographical disadvantage. They were spread out across Russia um, and they didn't control the industrial centres of Petrograd and Moscow. This meant communication was difficult, it meant they didn't control the um, armament production factories, um, they certainly didn't have access like the Reds did to the Tsar's um, armaments and he had an arsenal of 2.2 2 million rifles in Petrograd. And because they didn't control Petrograd and Moscow, they also didn't control the railways, which meant that movement of troops was much harder and movement of supplies was much harder. Um, the Whites, unlike the Reds, lacked unity. They didn't have a clear leader. The Whites didn't get along very well with the Greens. The Whites were like also split up into almost small independent armies with lots of different aims. So the lack of unity was a massive disadvantage. Also, the whites didn't treat the peasants very well and made some unwise decisions that didn't garner, didn't generate their support. So for example, they said that they would give the land of the rich back to the rich if they won in the Civil War. Indeed, one admiral called Kolchak, K-O-L-C-H-A-K, Kolchak, even started doing this in areas he had control of, taking the land off the peasants and giving it back to the rich. So this lost them a lot of support. Finally, the Whites' foreign support was lacklustre. Britain was lukewarm in their support. The French troops didn't want to fight in a Russian civil war and they mutinied in the Black Sea, refusing to follow orders. That's what mutiny means, if you refuse to follow orders. Whereas the Japanese had pretty much withdrawn by mid-1919. So pr promises of foreign aid didn't amount to much. So they are the white weaknesses and they were crucial in why the reds won the civil war but the reds also had their own strengths so the red strengths lenin was key in making decisions domestically that were to help them win the civil war so most importantly, he introduced war communism and the requisitioning of grain from the peasants and the increased Soviet order brought to the factories meant that the Red Army were all fed and armed, unlike they had been in World War I. So this was a major success militarily. This economic policy had a massive military, military success to it. Also, um, the Red Terror. 
created a climate of fear um, as the Cheka tortured and executed many, often innocent people, who were suspected of disloyalty or challenging the rule of the Bolsheviks. Therefore, fearful of potential retributions if they aided the Reds, the peasants very much stayed out of the civil war where they could and didn't support the Reds when they entered villages. Finally, Lenin passed a decree on land. This gave land to peasants from the rich and won peasant support. This was in contrast to the white. We remember Admiral Kolchak had already started giving um, the rich people their land back and losing peasant support. And one more, um, Lenin had set up a propaganda division to the Bolsheviks called Agitprop, which spread positive messages about the Bolsheviks that convinced many peasants that the Bolsheviks were the only ones who would protect their interests and the Bolsheviks were the answer to a better way of life in the future. So they spread their positive messages through plays, films and posters. So now let's look at the role of Trotsky. Now remember he was the Commissar of War and was key in the tactical decisions of war and leading the war. Now, he led, to use this first picture, he led from the front in a war train, um, and his willingness to go to dangerous areas inspired his troops to fight bravely. He also introduced conscription for all people between, well, all men between the ages of 18 and 40. Now, this meant that the Red's force was 20 times larger than the White's force. Now that's a massive discrepancy. Um, so the White's force was 250,000, whilst the Red's force was approximately 5 million. Trotsky also used the carrots to inspire um, his troops to bravery. So he used praise, um, he introduced medals like the Red Banner and he encouraged people to fight bravely to get promotions. He also used the stick to ensure his men fought bravely too. So for example he did decimation, so if a man deserted um, one in ten of his unit were killed. He also recruited the Tsar's old officers and kept their families as hostages and said if they didn't fight bravely, their families would be killed. So that obviously had a massive impact on those men and ensured they did fight bravely. So this is why the Reds won the Civil War. The white weaknesses, which played against the Red strength, and the role of Lenin and Trotsky. It can be summarised like a revision card, which you'll get here, and it can be found on page 26 of your revision guide if you would like to read a little bit more around it. So once again, try to memorise this information, but please don't um, do it once and then leave it alone. Regularly revisit it, especially in the weeks just before your exam, to make sure it's solidified in your head and that you don't remember it to then forget it again. And that is our question number five, number five, finished.